Welcome to this uh, segment on determining converter ratings in terms of voltages and currents uh, for converters in uh, various applications. Uh, so we'll look at them in uh, applications involving electric drives, uh, for example, in uh, wind turbines, uh, in uninterruptible power supplies, UPS, and uh, power systems that includes uh, uh, applications of uh, photovoltaics and batteries and fuel cells and things like that. So uh, first let's uh, start with drives and uh, we, uh, we have seen this uh, block diagram of adjustable speed drive where uh, power you know, input is from the utility source generally and uh, here's the load and the power flow of course can reverse and uh, this power processing unit is the the one involving power electronic converters, and uh, we need to know the voltage and current ratings uh, before we can determine it, and that depends upon what this motor or a generator uh, is required to do. So if you look, uh, start with DC motor, and whenever it says motor, it could be a generator, because any motor can seamlessly go into a generation mode. So if you look at the details of a DC machine, what we see is a stator has permanent magnets. If it's a permanent magnet uh, DC machine, and on the rotor circuit, we have this armature windings, and then we have uh, a commutator, and then uh, which is this commutator is rotating with the, the rotor, and the brushes are stationary. So when we look at uh, the DC machine equivalent circuit, we, we see this uh, kind of circuit diagram where here is the power electronic uh, converter. We call it PPU here, power processing unit. It is producing this voltage VA, DC voltage. And uh, the motor equivalent circuit is shown uh, to the right here in terms of the armature resistance, the armature inductance. And then it has a back EMF, uh, EA, which depends upon the rotational speed. So this K sub E is the voltage uh, constant of this machine. And, uh, and the current that is drawn uh, from the power processing unit are fed into it. Uh, this I sub A depends upon how much torque is being supplied by this machine. And uh, so this electromagnetic torque divided by the torque constant KT, that determines the current. And uh, you can see that in this uh, circuit, the voltage equation is uh, equal to uh, the sum of this uh, back EMF EA plus the drop across the resistance plus the drop across the inductance here. And if we neglect uh, any damping uh, in the circuit, then uh, the acceleration, which is d omega m dt, is ret determined by the, the difference of the electromagnetic torque that is produced minus the load torque that is opposing it. The difference of those two divided by the combined inertia of the system. So, so here, once again, this is repeated, uh, and it is shown that, uh, it can be shown that the torque constant, for example, in uh, Newton meters uh, per amp is equal to uh, the voltage constant in uh, volts per radians per second. So if you use MPS units, then numerically these two quantities are equal. So uh, we can see here that uh, the voltage that uh, needs to be there across the armature terminals, that primarily depends upon the rotational speed. So if you know what the maximum speed is, then uh, we can determine what this term would be, knowing the voltage constant. And then we have to take into account small drop uh, as well across the, the resistance in steady state, but this is uh, usually pretty small. Uh, so <coughs> for estimating the rating, uh, ratings of these converters, you may wish to, you may be able to ignore that. Uh, as far as the current rating of this converter is concerned, that depends upon how much electromagnetic torque uh, is required divided by the torque constant here. So, you know, we can also see the torque speed characteristics of this machine, provided the field flux is kept constant, which will be the case if you have uh, permanent magnet uh, machines, and we are not doing any field weakening. 
Now, moving on to the so-called PM AC machines, permanent magnet AC machines. Now, here uh, we have uh, on the rotor circuit yeah, these permanent magnets. North and south here, just two pole machine is shown. And then on the stator, we have three phase windings. <clears throat> and we can assume that uh, uh, the flux reaching the stator from the rotor is uh, sinusoidally distributed in, uh, in space at any given time. It can be represented by a space vector, which, uh, and this vector is uh, along the orientation of uh, these uh, magnets here. And uh, the length of the space vector would depend upon the strength of this uh, flux density that is reaching the, the stator. So that is what is shown here. And this position theta sub m, or this angle theta sub m, changes as this rotor rotates here. So these machines are used in a closed loop. So we have this PMAC machine, and uh, we need to supply these appropriate currents IA, IB, and IC to these three windings. And uh, uh, to determine what these currents need to be, uh, we need to make sure that the current space vector, without going into the details here, uh, that is produced is uh, 90 degrees ahead of this uh, uh, flux density space vector. So this current space vector uh, which is made up of these three currents is uh, 90 degrees ahead in the direction of rotation. And uh, the amplitude of this uh, current vector dictates or determines what the electromagnetic torque produced is. So in these machines, <coughs> since we want to put this current uh, space vector to be 90 degrees ahead, uh, we need to have a position sensor, which uh, senses the position of this uh, so we need this position sensor, which knows what this angle is at which uh, the, the flux B sub R is. Uh, and therefore, we can then calculate this uh, current space vector IS, which in turn then can tell us what uh, at any instant of time this cur these currents IA, IB, and IC need to be. So they work, uh, these machines operate in this uh, closed loop here. But uh, once again here, just like in a DC machine, the speed which uh, uh, is dependent upon the frequency of voltages and currents uh, determines what uh, the amplitude of the voltage would be, uh, which this converter needs to produce. And uh, <clears throat> similarly, in order to uh, maintain, uh, uh, and the frequency, as you can see here, is, depend is being determined by Frequency actually determines speed. And uh, so these are in steady state. And also this electromagnetic torque is proportional to then the current that uh, needs to flow through this converter. So the, the electromagnetic torque then ends up determining the current rating of this converter, just like in a DC machine. So now moving on to the third type of machine, which is an induction machine, really a workhorse. And uh, here we see that we have uh, three phase windings on the stator, A, B, and C, uh, just like in a PMAC machine. But on the rotor, instead of magnets, uh, we have a squirrel cage. So these are bars uh, towards the periphery of the rotor, uh, copper bars, which are then short circuited at two ends th through these end, so called end rings over here. And that's why it's called a squirrel cage. So in this machine, uh, if we were to, let's say, somehow magically cut the, the rotor bars, and so the rotor is there, but it's electrically open-circuited. And if you were to apply three-phase voltages here, as shown, VA, VB, and VC in steady state, represented by their phasers, then this machine would, would draw what is called magnetizing currents, IMA, IMB and IMC. And uh, it essentially looks like an inductor. So these currents would lag behind their respective voltages by 90 degrees. If you ignore some small resistance, that would be there in each stator winding. <coughs> so uh, what happens in these machines is that uh, uh, as uh, uh, we load this machine and rotor slows down, 
then uh, more current is drawn from the, the stator side to compensate for or to nullify the rotor MMFs. So without going into the details of how this machine works, uh, once again, we can see that uh, the, the voltage required of the converter depends upon the, the, the frequency and which is proportional to the speed, uh, synchronous speed, which is uh, quite close to the actual speed in these machines. Uh, so it depends upon this. So the, the bottom line is the voltage depends upon the speed and uh, the, the current that this converter has to supply once again, depends upon the electromagnetic torque that is required of, of these machines here. <clears throat> so moving on to the next application, which is uh, so-called uh, UPS, uninterruptible power supplies. Uh, this is a curve obtained uh, from this association and it's called a CBMA curve. It shows uh, this uh, voltage tolerance level. Uh, so here's the voltage and here's time. So if the voltage profile is within this uh, tolerance envelope, then there's no problem. But outside of that, uh, we need to uh, do something. So for critical loads, what is commonly done is that these critical loads are supplied uh, through this UPS, not directly from uh, the, the utility supply because that could sometimes uh, disappear. So what happens here is that uh, here may be the utility supply. And uh, so we have rectifier and inverter here. So we first rectify, so it's DC here, and there's some energy storage, usually in the form of batteries. And then this DC is inverted uh, to the line frequency and then uh, filtered because it will be a chopped waveform with uh, ripple in the current. So that is uh, filtered and then uh, that output is then supplied to this critical load. But, you know, uh, instead of having this arrangement, uh, maybe we don't have this. This is just a, a photovoltaic array here. So that will work here too. So as you can see, uh, this could be an, uh, a circuit that um, could be used in case of uh, uh, feeding power from photovoltaic arrays to the, so instead of load, you can think of this as the utility here. So we are feeding power into the utility like this here. The other applications of uh, power electronics, uh, uh, what we saw in, in terms of uh, photovoltaics uh, is just uh, one such application, but uh, there are applications where we may want to just supply or draw reactive power from the utility. So a one line diagram is shown here. Here is the, the DC bus voltage. And uh, by means of this inverter, we'll chop it into a you know, single phase or three phase AC, normally three phase, and only a one line diagram is shown. Let's say that uh, the voltage at the output of this uh, inverter is uh, labeled here. And, uh, and here's the utility voltage. And uh, there's some inductance in the middle and uh, this current, let's say, is shown in the direction of going into the utility. So we can draw a, a per phase diagram in steady state as shown here. Uh, and we think of only the fundamental frequency that is being synthesized by this uh, inverter. So we have this uh, converter voltage here, the utility voltage, and uh, the inductance uh, is shown, represented by a reactance, omega L here. And uh, you can see that uh, given V sub S, whatever that is, uh, so we take that as the reference phaser over here, and uh, we have the capability in th these uh, inverters, as we'll see later on in other segments, to adjust the magnitude and the phase angle of this converter voltage here. So you can see that uh, by adjusting this converter voltage, let's say where the tip of this converter voltage phaser is on this circle over here, okay, you, we can vary the, the current uh, in a way that the tip of uh, this current phaser uh, travels along this circle over here. 
So we can see that uh, we can make this current to be, for example, uh, perfectly 90 degrees uh, uh, lagging or leading compared to this voltage over here. So we can uh, supply or draw uh, reactive power from this uh, uh, utility source, uh, utility, utility voltage here. So th this could be, uh, this is not could be, it is used in many such applications, power electronic converter that is. So this brings us to the end of this segment uh, where we have looked at how we can calculate the voltage and current ratings of these converters in uh, various applications uh, that we have mentioned in this segment.